All right, we're going to talk through the three different methods of illustrated portraits that we're learning in class. One is called freeform, one is called line, and one is called polygonal. I'll talk through line first because it seems to be the easiest method. Um, over in our layers area, I'm going to choose to unlock that layer. I'm also going to add a layer above it. Now the layer above it is so that I can do and draw things on it. So if I go to my brush, remember I can change my brush size using the bracket keys. And I'm going to choose a really prominent color for this for now. Okay, so I'm going to go red. Now, I want to see him zoomed in, so I'm going to hope, hit Command-0 or Control-0 for full screen there. And I'm going to uh, outline him where I want to. So as I continue to outline, and I'm going to choose to outline different things about Einstein that I notice. I don't know if you notice the same things, but I notice a mustache here. And I can make these fine-tune adjustments, of course, by zooming in. So with Einstein's face, I might choose to bring down the brush size a little bit and to change that aspect a tad. So I see these different lines appear on the nose. I'll bump up the brush size a little bit for the regular outline of the nose. bump it down for maybe the thinner version of what's going on there. You see up here we've got eyes and wrinkles, so eyes are pretty small and delicate, so I'm going to want to zoom in a lot to see those details so I get it right. If I can get one eye right, of course, you see even the level of difference there between the two, and then this little circle as well. I've got some wrinkles here that kind of come down, and of course, uh, depending on what you're trying to capture, you are starting to trace over and develop your own system. Now, I don't have to capture all those lines. Uh, I can work on different things. I'm going to turn this off, the bottom layer off for a second so you can see that I'm starting to develop this. So as I get a fuller picture, and maybe I'll bump up my brush size again so that I can see the outline of the face a little bit more clearly. There's that and it comes down here and We've got, so it kind of goes around the forehead. I'm going to do the hair differently. Kind of work an eye out. But as I continue to work this method out, I'm going to develop a illustration that's hopefully unique. Even though I'm using the same photo, your photo would look different than my photo. Even this little thin part of the cheek might be a reference. As I'm starting to develop that, I have to keep turning this on and off because with line, I really don't want to see what's going on underneath. There are variations to uh, uh, tackle what's going on underneath, but to reference the student examples, this is a great example of line. Um, this is a good example of line. This is a good example of line. Finding different ways to put things underneath line. All of these are line options, these two. So if I want, I can create a new layer on top of or below that. Now if I take my uh, paintbrush, I'm going to change my color to something obvious and I'm going to bring up my brush size. If I brush in here, I actually start to 
get a sense of, and I can be as specific as I want or not, uh, but I can actually paint different areas as well. I can turn down the opacity of that, turn that off, and then bump up another color so I can keep on going. Those possibilities are endless. I even like to do something maybe where I take a, a selection tool of sorts and I uh, come over here and just select this particular type of shape, bring that back. And now I've got that selection or I can go these other selections and let's just say I go the opposite or the inverse. So I go select inverse and I choose black. Now I can paint black on the non-selections. So that's going on there. So I really need to work on the presentation aspect. Of course, if I duplicate this layer and then uh, choose, uh, I hold command or control click on this little layer thumbnail, it selects what has already been selected. Uh, I'm going to inverse that again because the inverse is the middle part. And now I'm going to try a different color. to keep giving you other options. Oops, sorry. Go over green there. And you can see now this is my alternate selection. So I've got, a, you can see right here, I've got this option there. I guess I don't need this duplicated option, so I just delete this. I deselect and you can see what's going on. And I'm starting to get a sense of what line could be, but also presenting line itself. Okay, second one. Let's go back to original Einstein. So I'm going to turn these layers off. Original Einstein's right here. So second one's called the polygonal method. Now, I always recommend at least duplicating two or three versions of the background before it gets destroyed. Turn them off. You're not going to use them know which one you're going to use. So I'm just going to call this Polygon. Now Polygon has a label to it and I'm going to be working off of this current one. Now this is black and white so it's going to be slight uh, challenge but you'll understand the method of it later. Number one you could make by using uh, this little uh, adjustment layer you could try and use posterize or threshold, I like posterize, to bring different things out. Now you see this version of things, now it has a number four up here. I can go two, I can go five, I can go nine, and see different ways I can see what's happening with Einstein. Now, you, I'm going to turn that off for a second, but if you wanted to use that, what I would do is I'd set it, then I'd uh, select both layers by holding shift. I'd right click and I'd say um, merge layers. Now watch what happens. That goes away and the posterize remains and it's called posterize. So maybe you work off of that one. Now I don't want to so I'm going to delete it but that's why I have multiple duplicated unbroken versions of this Einstein. All right so the polygon is really designed to be around a uh, sided geometric shape. So you could do it a couple of different ways. You could do squares. So if you do a square or a rectangle like this, um, and that even might be a little bit too big. Uh, I always like to zoom in and see details. So let's go rectangle like this. So the idea is you select something. Uh, and then you go up to filter, blur, um, and average. Filter, blur, average. So average will take the average set of colors within that uh, packet of uh, uh, selection. So if I then wanted to select another rectangle, well, I'd just go a little bit further and I'd select that one. And now if you notice, up top it says average because once you do it one time the most recent filter always pops up here. 
then it shows you what you can click on and a keyboard shortcut. So on a Mac, it's Command and uh, I believe that's Control F. I'm going to try it once and I'll let you know. Command Control F. And then it took the average of that. So I believe it's uh, Control um, Option maybe for a PC, but you'll have to play around with that. So you could technically keep on going with just simple rectangles, Control Command F, and averaging these out as you go through. So you notice you've got this kind of pattern that's starting to develop. And then when you get closer to the eyes, well then, and it works better, much better with color, but when you get closer with the eyes, you start to have to have even more detail um, and change those rectangle shapes and work through that. So you're kind of working a pixel or grid like that. I also like to use this polygon lasso, which is why it was named polygon method, uh, for this method. And I like to, instead of just doing basic rectangles, I like to actually do some really cool and interesting shapes. So this is similar to the pen tool. You click, you move, you click, you move, and then you come up and you complete a shape. So we've got the triangle. We go command option F or average. and We've got these methods. So anytime you've got a weird thing like this that's like, I didn't mean to start there, just double click and then start again. So uh, you can do all triangles. You can do these interesting quadrilateral shapes. And then you keep on averaging until you get something uh, that works for you. So when I get to things like the eyebrow, uh, I tend to get a little bit more detailed so people will recognize that that's an eyebrow instead. What I don't do is I do not select the entire eyebrow. I don't go bop, 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 and then do the average. It's a method you could try, but I like to flood it with a lot of tiny little options. So now that you understand at least what's happening with this particular uh, method, now you can recognize, okay, so if I click off this layer, actually the whole thing goes away because I am actually painting on this particular layer. I'm averaging the color of the pixels. So with this method, you have to keep going until you cover the entire face. So it's tedious, it's repetitious, it comes out really well at the end. You'll notice here we've got a couple of different methods. We've got just a face. I really like the way that that one is done. So just the face or um, we've got um, Helena. She uh, really worked on the side profile. She even polygoned in interesting ways up here with different types of rectangles when these are more triangles and shapes. But she was able to find different lines. Um, we've got Olivia working this out, and if you're care not careful, care see what her nose looks like because it's really difficult. You almost got to go smaller, and uh, Alex uh, did a pretty nice job. Matt, of course, thinks through the polygon thing and then puts a background. Actually, all of them put a background. So let's talk background for a second again. So if we have the polygon method and then we zoom out, we have right now a actual background. So a lot of people, we've done this before, we take this uh, quick selection and we try and quick select the background itself without the hair. So it's not going to be perfect and easy and you're, you'll notice I have to hold option to get a minus sign and I kind of go around the hair like this, make sure I'm not talking about that and I come up top here and then I get over here. It's not perfect but I'm doing what I can I'm going to shrink this a little bit, get a little bit more of this if possible. And then I have to undo that part right there. So not undo, but minus it. So then I can, if I'm doing this correctly, I just hit delete and that goes away, that background. So when that background goes away, of course, now I'm polygoning the rest of this. But I can put another background. I can hit 
the new layer button and drag it underneath and paint something if I want. So just pure green again. Let's just go like that and you'll notice the behind it is now green. So we've just chosen a different variation. Or you have other options like solid color, or gradient, or pattern. So a gradient, you could say, you know what, I'm going to, I'd like to try a different type of gradient uh, where now I don't want white. Maybe I'll try black here um, and try and figure out what the slide method of that is. And then uh, there's a style of gradient too, linear or radial. So I'll go radial and then maybe scale this up and you'll notice it's kind of giving us this vignette look. So lots of different options for background, but we polygon the, the face. All right, the last one. So I'll turn these off again. Package these. If you ever want to bin them up, you can select them. Click the little folder. And we'll call this polygon. And we will call these lines. So the last method then is your basic uh, freeform. And freeform is what it sounds like. Freeform, let me show you a couple of examples that have happened in the past. Um, freeform is more like uh, this with Bruno, where we're drawing and painting on different styles of things, or freeform is um, a combination of this drip method down here, and she combined it with polygon. I'll try and find more methods in class. Freeform is definitely Rylan. Freeform is definitely uh, here where we've gotten this these selections with Cole and he just uh, starts to put color in it. So this is an interesting one. Actually Freeform is here too. Um, so if I uh, choose Freeform, let's just take this hair method for a second. With Einstein, Freeform might be good with the regular old lasso tool. So I know that Einstein's hair is roughly right here. So I'm just going to drag a little simple shape until I get to the original. Now I'm going to paint this. So I'm going to choose maybe like a uh, try and get like a cream version of something here. Okay, and I'll paint. Uh, okay, so it says I can't paint because I'm on the wrong line. And I don't necessarily want to paint on this layer, remember? So let's go ahead and hit a new layer and just paint this. So that's great, except his hair was crazy in terms of like those little lines. So I'm going to take that, um, really thin down my brush, and uh, maybe make this a little lighter. So if I go lighter, I supposedly, let me zoom in, I can draw all these little strands and squigglies. So of course I'm just going really fast so you can see, but now I've kind of almost like worked out a situation here where now I'm just drawing these hair lines going to get crazy and then I think through what I want here and so that's where again this might be good if I go to this posterize method and I posterize Einstein's face a little bit. Now you see it posterized just the hair. Uh, I'm going to hit on do. Because I have a selection around it, it's only going to choose to posterize that. We'll talk about that in one second. So I'm actually going to click here, then go to posterize again and see if I can see different things. Now with this set in place, Maybe I totally do something different. So this is where I like to combine these. I'll merge these layers. I'm going to duplicate this back layer just so I've got another version later in case something happens. So now with this, I've got these cool like little areas where I can, I know now I might want to go um, like this. I'll work out this action and use this as kind of a guide. So you can actually do it with selection as well. So if you wanted to, you could select this particular area. But 
now with that kind of edge, now I'm just going to go around and fill in my gaps here. work that out and paint in there. So I've got this part of him kind of work through and paint him. I turn that off. Oops. I turn off the, uh, well, oh, Freeform is going to show everything because I'm on this particular layer. I didn't create a new layer off of that. So your method, whatever you want to do. So another thing you could do, which is what Cole did, was I'm going to turn this off. So I'll start with Einstein again. Uh, you could just have these really cool selections. So let's just say I'm going to select this part of his head. So with the selection now, if you choose another thing up here with the adjustment layers, it only applies to the selection itself. So I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation, Colorize and change the color of that. Now you see what you were beginning to notice is I'm actually colorizing just that selection. I come back to the original layer again, I drag around again, and I work this out and colorize uh, different things. So I go again to colorize, and this time I'm going to drag to a different color, and then maybe I'm going to colorize just his and if you want to hold shift, you can colorize multiple things there. So colorize just his eyebrows. Uh, and uh, I need to click on the layer itself that I want to work on, because if it's on here, it's not going to select that same thing. Click on the actual human layer you're working on, then go to Hue and Saturation after you've selected something, and then colorize, and um, click this tab and work this action out. So you notice it shows green here, but not here. That's because this layer is below the others. So what I can do is I can drag that up, and I can see the green and green throughout that. So I'm starting to work this kind of freeform method out and kind of have these things where face does show underneath. So line, we don't want any face to show. Polygon, we want to get to a point where we fill the entire face. And freeform uh, is a adventure into the unknown. There is no wrong way to do it, and there's no right way to do it. All right, uh, that'll give you a heads up as to how to do those three methods. If you have to return to those, of course, um, I'm gonna, I'll package these up for a second so that we have another version of that for three. Last thing is then just turn on the layers that you want and then export it out, right? And export it out as a uh, particular uh, JPEG or PNG. All right, good luck with the methods. Create some good art.